anointing fall on Rose from the concrete was a concert held at the National Stadium last Saturday featuring the popular young Jamaican dancer artist, 25 years old, Skilly Ben. The theme of the concert was taken from a line of one of his songs, Rose That Grew From Concrete. Although the song is embroidered with underlying, underlying sexual content and offensive language, it touches a chord in the hearts and lives of our young people. They went out in droves to hear his message in song. What is the message? It is the message of resilience amidst the struggles in life, rose from concrete. The theme is linked to a poem written by Tupac. The last sentence of his poem reads, Long live the rose that rose from concrete when no one else ever cared. The play on the word rose is rather interesting. The rose could either be the past tense of the verb to rise or the rose flower. Both paint the picture of resilience. As Tupac explained, the rose symbolizes a man or woman. The concrete stands for the ghetto, the rough environment in which many of our youths are born or find themselves. There is no way a rose flower could grow from a concrete. This means that it is very hard for a man, for a woman, to survive the hard life of the ghetto and also make something out of himself or herself. Nevertheless, man and woman can still survive if he or she is ready to swim against nature's law. Actually, the nature's law says that no one is expected to survive life in the ghetto. This is a message of our Caribbean young people, our Caribbean artists, of Skilly Bang, that out of the ghetto comes a rose, out of the ghetto comes talent, out of the ghetto comes giftedness. And this is what attracts our young people. The very lives of these artists proclaim something that they too are experiencing the struggles, the difficulties of life, that they continue to be, to be resilient. The church is faced with deep and complex issues that can only be addressed if our faith becomes incarnational. That is, if we become incarnate in our history of our people, the artists become incarnational. They are incarnational. They know what the young people are experiencing. They themselves are experiencing it. And they are putting it in song. And that's why they are able to connect with our young people. And our young people are, are, are following them in droves. The more we seek to understand why the young people go in record numbers to church at the stadium instead of our traditional church buildings is the closer we draw to the Lord. Yes, the church at the stadium last Sunday because the church is where the people of God gathers. The church at the stadium on last Saturday we can we could describe it as messy, as confusing, as chaotic, but also vibrant and living. Because wherever the young people are, there is energy, there is talent, there is creativity. 
at first, it can be even scandalous. Very much like the life of the church and the life of the world. Because we know sometimes life in the church can be disheartening. My dear brother, brothers and sisters, perhaps we are more comfortable with a religion that is more organized and less chaotic, even squeaky clean. But see God right here and now. Because God is in the mess. God also, we can find answers where God wants to lead us if we enter the darkness of people's lives and know what they are experiencing, then we'll know how we can respond effectively. If we stay in the four walls of the church and not try to engage the, the messiness of life, the complexity of life, then we will not be able, like skinny Ben, to draw the young people in droves. It is a temptation to seek God elsewhere rather than in the messiness and the complexities of people's lives. There are a few takeaway lessons from the concert, Rose from Concrete. And I quote Luke chapter 16 verse 8. His master commended the unjust manager, not for his misdeeds, but because he had acted shrewdly by preparing for his future on unemployment. For the sons of this age, the non-believers, are more wise in relation to their own kind than us, sons and daughters of light. That skilly Ben. It's more using his giftedness, using his intelligence to get to the young people than us Christians who claim to be closer to God. In the church, we lack creativity. We lack openness. We dry, we dead. We can't attract nobody, not even the young people. And we claim we have the truth. We, we, we have what? We have what it takes, but it is not evident. The promoters, skilly men, they dream about those who want to come and they strategize. They create, if you go to the fets, they create an excellent experience for the patrons. From the entrance decor to the props to the lights, Added, uh, added attraction to the performances on stage. The artists spend hours in the studios crafting their songs to send them out in battle. To captivate the hearts and minds of our people. They speak to reality. They talk about the struggles and share how they cope. They tell their stories. Their stories are real. And that's why the young people see hope. They see something deep in what they're saying. How prepared are we for the Sunday liturgy? How we are prepared, how well are we prepared for the Sunday, lit for the Sunday liturgy? My dear brothers and sisters, oftentimes it lacks preparedness. It begins with me as a priest as well, because all preaching, like skinny Ben, must speak human issues rather than church issues. People want to know how to deal with the crisis in their life, the challenges in their life. You have, we have to bring the scriptural text alive in real ways. Because people are going through real problems. Our 
preaching must reach the unchurched. Our preaching must land in people's hearts. My dear brothers and sisters, <laughs> when the word of God is proclaimed, it must touch the hearts of people. It must stir up in people the desire to want to overcome their struggles. It must put hope in their hearts. It must move them to come out, out of the darkness. Else, if it's unable to do that, then we are failing. But being human is being vulnerable. People resonate with weaknesses. And that's what the people, that's what the young people are able to connect with our, our, our Caribbean artists because they tell the story. They tell the story in the songs. And they're not afraid to also to share the times when they have failed, the weaknesses, the things that they are struggling with. Just like Skinny Ben and the other artists are able to find a language that resonate with the listeners. We to as church need to find a language which will resonate with our people. But also the artists, when they come out on stage, they perform with passion. They perform with passion and authority. We too, when we proclaim the word of God, just like the prophet did, they did not say me, but they preach with passion and authority. We too must pre preach with passion and authority. The church was birthed by preaching. When the apostles preached, many hearts were moved, many hearts were converted. Lives will change. When you are in the stadium and these artists are performing, the young people move with the words. They come alive. But we claim as church to have the word of God with Jesus Christ, which should even more penetrate the hearts of our people even more powerfully. Preaching isn't the same as catechesis. Because 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 says, proclaim the testimony, the, proclaim the testimony of God. My preaching should come from deep down, from my soul, from my heart. Why? Because my preaching comes from knowing that Jesus Christ has worked in my life and is working in, in my life and I've experienced the goodness of God. So I share this by the way I live my life. The goal of preaching isn't passing on information but bringing about transformation. We have to we, we, we have to bring forth, unfold, or bring before our people how beautiful God is and how and, and the need to, ori to orient their lives around this God who is good, who is merciful, who is loving. My dear brothers and sisters, our artists, they come, they set up tents, and they keep moving. There is no permanent structure. They keep moving from country to country, from place to place, proclaiming their message, proclaiming their story. They are missional and not, and not maintaining structures. We, the church, is opposite. We tend to maintain church rather than missional. So inside a church, we're trying to renovate a, a building. But inside the building, is not, there is no life. 
The gospel of Jesus Christ has to be proclaimed out there. The church is missional. Because the work of the church is not putting down physical buildings. The work of the church is to proclaim a message, not a building. We have a gospel to proclaim the kerygma. And here is our message. That Jesus Christ also rose from concrete. But his story is unlike any other. He was placed in a cold, great tomb of stone, dead for three days. But concrete couldn't stop him. He rose from the dead. And any experience of being raised from the concrete is through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have a more powerful message to proclaim. And that's why the church speaks about the new evangelization. It's about how are we going to proclaim this message in this modern times? How, how are we going to re-propose the gospel to people in our land and cultures heavily influenced by secularization? And that's why John Paul II in 1983, you know, he lists three qualities of the new evangelization. We have to proclaim this word of God with new means, with new expression, with new fervor, with new passion. And that's, why, and that's what the artists are doing. They are in the studios day and night, seeing how to proclaim this word in a way that is creative, that is a way that will resonate with the people of today. That's the work. We have to go behind closed doors. We have to engage deeply the sciences, the social sciences, the, uh, the cultural sciences. And see how best to proclaim this message today. Because the world of today is not the same 10 years ago, 5 years ago. The world is changing. The young people of today are different than the young people five years ago, ten years ago. So it means that the message must change. We must find new means, new expression to reach our young people. And this is what is lacking in the church. Finally, how can we become an effective evangelizer? My dear brothers and sisters, it begins with us, it begins with me, it begins with you. It begins with being evangelized. Many of us have been catechized, but not evangelized. We went through the sacraments, but then, because if someone is evangelized, that person is generous. That person is open. That person wants to share the goodness of God in their lives. But Catholics are dead. They're stingy. GNCC is struggling this Christmas. Companies will, will put billions of dollars in advertisement. Buy rum. Buy this. How are we going to counteract that? The church cannot be effective if we continue to put $5 and $10 in the collection plate. And I find it quite, quite heartbreaking when I see our, our own Catholics are paying $500 to go to a fete, $1,000 to buy a carnival costume, $25 to buy a bottle of rum. And when they come to church, it's difficult to put a $5. Because, my dear brothers and sisters, we are yet to be evangelized. 
We yet because when we come to know Jesus, it's a love thing. You love Jesus so much, you love the church so much that you will go any length, do anything to make it come alive. We need to be evangelized. And unless, unless we put a lot of effort and focus in evangelizing our people, our Catholics, we will continue to struggle. We will continue to struggle. The financial challenges that we face as church, our empty churches, the lack of catechists, Volunteerism, all this, the source of it is that our people are yet to be evangelized. And that's the biggest challenge the church faces. And it's more work. The more difficult thing is to get to people's heart and change it. Prayer, ministry, that's where the work is. We have a message to proclaim, a message more powerful, a message that will resonate more with, with even with our young people. The message of, Je of Jesus Christ who rose from the concrete. Skinny Ben never died, but he tells his story how once he, act he was in an accident, almost lost his life. And he said he rose from concrete. In his song, Rose from Concrete, he talks about how look am, look am I coming from the countryside, coming out of nothing. And look, a beautiful girl I have as a girlfriend. She rose. But God has been doing these things for us. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation of darkness, of sin. We do not know where to go. We do not know how we're going to survive. But somehow, God comes and God intervenes. And God works a miracle in our life. He saves us. He redeems us. He brings us joy and peace. He, re he re reunites us. Many people come to church. Sometimes you are depressed. And many Catholics that come when they have problems in their lives. When things are okay, you don't see them. But when there are problems, they come. And sometimes you, you come and you experience an anointing preaching or anointed preaching. You experience a good music ministry. And somehow you live uplifted. You live healed. You cannot go to the pharmacy and buy a tablet to, to fix that problem. That problem was fixed, delivered. You were delivered by Jesus Christ. You were healed. You were healed. There's something deep. That tablet from the pharmacy cannot heal. That's come from Jesus Christ, whom we experience so often. But yet, there is no generosity in, in, our, in our response. We still remain stingy. Instead of giving to God back gen generously, that's what the problem is. We'd rather give it back to an artist in a fet. That's where the problem lies. And that's why the theme today, it's a season to renew, a season to reconnect, a season to rethink. It's more than thinking how to, how to have a better breakfast next year to make more money. The real problem is how are we going to strategize? What are we going to do to, in terms of being creative in our ministry, in the way that we do things to reach people, to reach the hearts of our young people so the church in Grenada will be alive and well. Amen.